So you want to buy an old project motorcycle, a bike that's perhaps not running, a bike that's perhaps needing a lot of work, maybe a full restoration. Well, let me tell you a few key tips and tricks into negotiating the best deal, looking out for the best bike possible, and what to walk away from on a motorcycle. I bought about 15 motorcycles in the last couple years, so let me tell you some things I've learned. This is one of the very few bikes that I have bought that isn't a project. This is my 1976 CB750. And even though this bike wasn't a project when I bought it, it still needs work, right? That's the reality of owning an old motorcycle. I did a video not too long ago on things you should know before buying a classic motorcycle, but this is what to know before buying a project bike. Now, there's various stages of project bike. There's some bikes that just haven't been running for an X amount of years, and there's some bikes that are literally found out of a barn that pretty much need everything. The biggest thing is, there's a right price for everything, and that you need to do your own research for. The best way to go about it is to look at auction results, because that's kind of where the most information you'll find is. Bring a trailer auctions, go to the auctions, and I would say take about maybe five or six percent off of the auction price if it was a mint motorcycle, and that's what I would pay for a really mint motorcycle on the open market. Auctions tend to be a little higher in my opinion. You'll see auction motorcycles go crazy money sometimes, and well, it's the auction hype, right? You don't wanna fall into that, and when it's on open market, you're just competing against everyone. But most of the time, depending on what market you're buying in, most winter markets are extremely slow, so you can probably get a good deal. After finding out what bike you want and what price you wanna buy it at, depending on the condition of the bike, let's talk about things you should actually look for using this bike right here. Now, if you're buying an old classic motorcycle, well, some of the biggest things about old classic bikes are original parts. You want it to be as original as possible if you're looking for something to be a pristine example of a bike after you're done restoring it or partially restoring it, right? You want something to be all there so you can either use the same parts you got or perhaps just buy new parts. You don't wanna be digging through books and catalogs on motorcycles that are missing a ton of parts. Now, if you have some experience with a platform, then you know what parts go where and what parts are missing. But the biggest thing is if you can find a bike that's in all original condition, and even though it might be in really rough condition, if it's all original, you know what parts that you can buy to make it whole again. Now, something I usually don't do, but something that you probably should do is make sure the bike has a key and also make sure the bike has a battery. And if it doesn't have a battery, bring one with you to see if all the lights light up because not only will you see if everything is working properly, but you can also usually use the self starter if it has one. Now, if your bike does that, then you have a problem. My bike's in gear. Now my guess is are the project bikes you guys are looking for aren't total restorations and to some extent they either run or they don't run and have sat for many many years. That's kind of what a lot of these bikes, the states a lot of these bikes are in. They're in good condition but they've been sitting in the back of some guy's garage for like 15 years and now he's ready to get rid of it finally. That's the project that I think is the best, the easiest to get into because usually you only have to do a few select things. Here are the things to watch out for when buying those bikes. So the old bikes you get a self starter but you also get a kick. I would highly, highly recommend, even if you hear the bike turning over with the self-starter, kick it over just to see how much compression the bike has and to make sure it turns over smoothly. Now, if you have an engine that's locked up, I mean, it's not the end of the world, right? There's a right price for everything, but just keep in mind, it's going to take a lot of your time. Calculate your time into the equation. Your time is money, so you don't wanna be hundreds of hours into a motorcycle restoration Maybe you're only a few thousand into parts. You gotta calculate the time because you can be doing better things with your time. And I always think about it, if I'm gonna pay someone to do this, how much would it cost? And then take about 50% off of what other labor rates are. It doesn't make sense to do it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we do it because we love it and spend way too much of our personal time anyways. But the biggest thing is for bikes that have been parked for extremely long amounts of time is that the motor turns over. If the motor doesn't turn over, you can get it to turn over, but it's a little annoying. But if your bike is turning over and all the electronics seems good, there's probably only one thing that's preventing your motorcycle from starting. The biggest thing about all old motorcycles is all of the carburetors will gunk up, whether it's parked for a year or whether it's parked for several years. Over the course of six to seven months, you could need to redo your carburetors. Carburetors are finicky, carburetors, I mean, they take a lot to dial in. But once you get them dialed, I mean, you got a nice machine. Even this bike right here, even though it's not a project when I bought it, it's gonna leak oil or gasoline, I should say, not oil, it leaks gasoline out of the carburetors. All of these old bikes are finicky. Carburetors are extremely, extremely 
temperamental, especially when they've been parked for many years. Most of the time, all they need is a good carburetor clean. As long as the motor is spinning freely and feels good, if you clean the carburetors, they probably will fire up. Take my CB550 for example. All I did to that bike, it was parked for almost 20 years. The only thing I did was clean the carburetors up, boom started right up. Getting the proper settings are sometimes hard, sometimes you have to pay people, and the thing to keep in mind with buying the project bikes is you simply just are going to have to troubleshoot multiple, multiple issues, primarily them being carburetor related. I cannot stress enough, most of the motorcycles we have bought, they've been parked for multiple years on end. The only thing that they ended up needing, especially the old Hondas, is just, oh, let me just clean the carburetors up. Oh, it's getting fuel most likely has spark, maybe check the spark plugs, then they fire right into life. Now, the things about the bike being original as possible is something that you just need to keep in mind. I mean, I understand if you're looking to make a custom motorcycle to some extent and you don't need those original parts, but original parts are worth good money, and sometimes if you buy a bike cheap enough that you're going to end up chopping up or modifying to an extent or restoring to your own extent and standards, the original parts can cushion some of the blow or cushion some of the cost in some cases, or even pay for the bike. I mean, I've bought a CX for $100, and if I make it into a cafe racer, there's certain parts out of that bike that I could sell for $100 and make and recuperate all the money I spent on the bike. A lot of times, motorcycles are worth more in parts than they are as holes. So, going into that mentality of doing a custom bike, you can sometimes, if you buy a whole bike, and maybe spend an extra $100 on a whole bike instead of a bike that is missing a ton of parts, you'll be able to sell those original parts or sell those parts that you took off the bike for hundreds of dollars. At the end of the day, if you're looking to buy a bike that's been parked for several years on end, I guarantee you most of the time, all they need is a tank coat. Um, make sure you check the conditions of tanks because if they have gasoline sitting in the tank, they can rust out super easily. You can usually coat motorcycle tanks, but it's a cost that you have to know going into it. And if you go into it knowing that it's going to need to be tank coated or sealed or resealed to some extent, then you can negotiate that down. Based off the overall condition, the parts it's missing, the parts it has, if the motor turns over, if there's a title to the bike, most old motorcycles don't have titles, so you can usually score yourself a deal with a no title bike and get a bonded title. Court ordered titles are a hassle that I haven't figured out how to do yet, and there's a Vermont loophole that's been closed in most states, so you really don't have too many options. Another big tip and trick I have, if you don't really know what you're buying or looking at, watch some videos on it, watch reviews, look at common issues the motorcycles have on some of the forums and people troubleshooting issues, because they'll give you an idea when you actually go to see the bike, oh, this bike is having this symptom, so it must have this issue, and you can go to the owner and tell them, this is most likely what is wrong with this bike and you might be able to negotiate the price further down. There's not a whole lot that goes into them. Just do a little bit of research on the specific bike you're buying and uh, look at the overall conditions. Check the exhausts, the tank, the motor, if it's turning over properly and if it's firing, if it's not firing right, if it's missing a cylinder, you gotta keep in mind it's most likely carburetion work and if it's been parked for years and years on end, chances are if it's an old Honda or something that is pretty reliable, and it doesn't seem to have any other huge red flags, it's probably just carburetor related. One other tip that I have would be check the oil in the motorcycles. Oil can tell you a lot. If you're finding chunks or flakes or if it's a water-cooled engine, you're finding it to be very milky, there's probably a bigger problem going on. But if it looks pretty clean, if it looks like it's been changed recently, I mean, even if it's super black, it's probably not the end of the world as long as there's no chunks and metal flakes in it. You can usually just check the oil really simply on most motorcycles. Take your time, do the checks that you need to do, look over the bikes, and well, make sure parts are available because for some bikes, parts are not available. And if the bike theoretically should be firing with gas, spark, combustion, if it checks those three, there's probably something wrong with the carburetors and you can probably fix it really easily in an afternoon. That's all I have for this one. I just wanted to make this video because I have a couple people in my comments who are like, is this a good bike? Should I buy one of these? Do the research on the forums. There's probably a ton of information on the specific vintage bike that you want. 
you just gotta look for it. Look for the common issues because this is a very kind of general idea. This is the basics. And for the most part, Hondas are just the basics. So if you wanna jump into an old project bike, look for a Honda that's been parked for a couple of years and you can usually get away with just cleaning the carburetors. If you're not looking for a project or looking for something you don't want to get your hands dirty on whatsoever, well, I highly recommend you neither know someone if you're buying a vintage bike or you don't buy them because something at some point will come up and that's why you should watch this video because it gets you a little bit more in depth into what it's actually like to own old bikes.